You guys know that this diet definitely has some problems, but we're gonna make it better. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen, literally today. We are gonna be going where no other dietitian has gone before. I'm gonna be attempting Kelaripa's diet as chronicled in her Harpa's Bazaar interview. But of course, Air Girl's gotta make some modifications. Okay, so a lot of you may remember my review of Kelly Ripa's Harper's Bazaar What I Eat in a Day. It was, in short, problematic. So much so that the original copy on Harper's Bazaar got taken down, and then Kelly's team reached out to us to ask us to take our copy down. So her team explained it to me like Kelly was on some kind of cleanse during the interview, but she actually described it as how she eats for 365 days a year, every day. I mean, no judgment from me either way, but it does seem like a kind of poor defense. Anyway, in my original video, I gave some suggestions on how I would potentially improve some of Kelly's meals. But today, I thought we would take it one step further and actually show you. Yep. I'm gonna be eating like Kelly Ripa circa 2020. And folks, you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my general disclaimer. The original diet recall is very restrictive and maybe triggering to some folks. So please feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. Also, please do not use this as a recommendation of what or how you should eat. This is simply what I ate on a specific day to meet my own needs. It is meant only for inspiration, not comparison. Finally, guys, if you are not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to follow me over on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. Before we get into the video, we're gonna build a hunger crushing combo toolkit. Okay, so today I'm feeling like some healthy fats and pistachios, fiber in a beautiful pear, and protein in one of my favorite Bilt Bars, the peanut butter brownie. You guys know I love these Bilt Bars because they come in so many different fun flavors like peanut butter brownie, what's not to love, and they taste like real chocolate because they are made with chocolate, but they are packed with quality protein. This bad boy right here has 19 grams and it tastes amazing. I don't know anything about real power tools, but this is a snack toolbox that I can get behind. So if you guys wanna try Bilt Bars for yourself, you can check out my link in the description and use my promo code ABBYSHARP15 to get 15% off of your order. All right, back to the kitchen. Okay, so according to Kelly, she always starts her day with this get off your acid greens powder, which according to her is for alkalinizing the digestive system. I take a glass of water and I have something called get off your acid daily greens, which is spirulina, spinach, kale, all ground to a powder that you mix into water and it is for alkalining your digestive system. Okay, Kelly, I'm just gonna interrupt you for a hot minute right there to ask, why would anyone actually want to alkalinize their digestive system? Like there's a reason why our stomach pH comfortably stays between one and two. Because without adequate hydrochloric acid in the gut to help to digest food, we would have serious digestive distress, hair loss, bloating, vomiting, you name it. So I can assure you that no greens powder will effectively change the pH of your gut. It also will not change your blood pH because if it did, Kelly and basically every other wellness influencer on TikTok would die. If you wanna learn more about greens powders and some major red flags you can watch out for, you can check out my full video right here. So yeah, I'm just gonna have regular old water with my vitamins because that's basically what I think greens powder really is, like a powdered multivitamin with maybe a little bit of flavor. There's little to no fiber in those supplements, so ultimately it's never gonna replace real whole veg. Okay, so next Kelly apparently has a large coffee blended with ghee. And you know what I say about that, guys? Your coffee order is sacred. I don't touch that <laughs> You drink how you like it. But if I'm honest for myself, ghee coffee, not my style. Abby, 
Any thoughts? Actually, yes. Butter coffee gained popularity thanks to an interest in intermittent fasting, keto, and Whole30. And ghee essentially takes it one step further by removing any of the milk solids, which means fewer carbohydrates and lactose. And while our dietary guidelines still do tend to demonize butter and other saturated fats, recent evidence has found it to have a pretty small or even neutral association with mortality, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. Ghee is also thought to be healthier than butter because it's a greater source of butyric acid, which has some gut health benefits, and conjugated linoleic acid, which very early research has shown some small benefits for weight loss. Having said that, I would never suggest adding more like pure fat to the diet to help support weight loss. I mean, any small benefits from the fatty acids are definitely gonna be refuted by the fact that you're adding in calories and extra fat. But if you like the flavor in your coffee, I think it's a great option. So yeah, I'm just gonna drink my normal latte how I like it. And I also kind of feel like I've had enough fluids for the day and I'm needing to eat something. So let's talk about the food. Um, I could probably just tell you what Kelly Ripa eats in a day, but I also just feel like she says it best. So let's take a look. A green apple cut up, and then I take two tablespoons of almond butter and a teaspoon of cinnamon. I blend it all together and I put the apples in there and I eat that like a porridge, if you will. And that is my first chewable food of the day. Yeah. We won't be doing that. Okay, I love that we have some fiber in the apples and some healthy fats in the almond butter, but there's just not enough protein or carbs or calories to satisfy my big girl appetite. So yeah, we're gonna have to bulk this up. So yeah, I'm feeling like we're gonna do real porridge, like actual oatmeal, um, rather than like almond butter apple paste, but we're gonna flavor it up Kelly style. Let's do it. Ooh. Oh, and I need this. All right, let's make some protein oatmeal. All right, a couple scoopies. A little more. I like to do a mix of water and some kind of milk. We're going with this protein milk. It's probably good. Always a generous pinch of salt. You cannot cook oatmeal without it, in my opinion. And I'd rather it be too thick and then add more than vice versa, because then it gets impossible to revive. You guys know, we love me some hemp hearts. That's going in. Loads of healthy fats. And my kids will be upset to know that I'm using their snack packs for my breakfast. <laughs> I want a snack pack. <laughs> Can't you just give me a snack pack? Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Do we want our apples crunchy, soft, crunchy, soft? I'm gonna do half and half, cause I can't decide. So we get some of it like cooked down nicely and then some on top for crunch. I'm not satisfied with that portion. Gonna add some almond butter in honor of Kelly, I know she's into that. Mm -hmm. All right, this is looking good to me. This is how all women make oatmeal in the morning. Just the, getting those slow-mo hero shots. All right, anyways, I need to add some extra protein. I've got some vanilla protein powder. You can use whatever you like. I'm gonna stir that in, and typically this thickens it up even more, so I'll just add a little bit more milk. There we go, that's my style. That's the texture your girl likes. All right, let's plate her up. All right, a little bit on top. Kelly, look at this. Kelly's a queen, don't get me wrong, and I feel like she rocks her show every single day. But if it were me having to do live television early in the morning, I would need something like this on board. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So good. All right, let's see what we're doing next. 
after I wrap for the day. I work out seven days a week. I don't work out seven days a week because I believe, as the research suggests, that our bodies need rest. And you know what? I think my body needs rest today. So I do try to move my body gently every day and I still have to take Poppy for a walk, but you know, muscles cannot grow and recover if we are training them extensively every day. What'd you smell, Poppy? You know, as I'm walking here, I'm just thinking how insane it would be for me personally to have to like get up early, go on live television, be on my A game, do a whole full workout on just like an apple with some almond butter. Like I'm not surprised that video got taken down. All right, Pops? All right. Finally, it's time for lunch. And apparently Kelly's go-to is a big salad with microgreens, avocado, and lots of nuts, plus a daily avocado toast, which she says. Kick of 2015 to 2017 it was two years where avocado toast was pretty much the foundation of my diet. Listen, I love avocado toast, but could I see myself eating it every single day, maybe multiple times a day for like two years? Absolutely not. Even if I want to, opening up a perfect ripe avocado every single day seems like a miracle. Same with the nuts, really. Like we had a lot of nut butter at breakfast um, and we're having more nuts here at lunch. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. And nuts are super nutritious, but if we're relying on nuts and avocado to basically make up the bulk of our meals, we're displacing other important nutrients in our day. Most notably, protein. Between those two first meals of the day, there just is not enough protein to support muscle protein synthesis post-workout. Protein is key for post-workout muscle protein synthesis. And while we don't necessarily need to be eating immediately after a workout, as we used to think, we do want to make sure that we're getting a full dose of protein, about 0.3 to 0.4 grams per kilogram of body weight per meal within four hours or so of our training. So for most folks, that is somewhere around the 20 to 30 gram per meal mark. And even if we were to add an egg to the avocado toast, as Kelly says that she sometimes does, I would say that we are still falling short of our recovery needs. So yeah, I didn't even do a heavy workout today and I know I need more protein to feel satisfied. So let's turn this into a hunger crushing combo. All right, so we've got some greens as our base. These actually came from my hubby's vertical farm. So they are super fresh and delicious. So we're gonna add those down. Um, what's next? We need some avocado here, which clearly she loves her avocado. So let's add some avocado on top. That's some healthy fats. We've got some of the nuts, which she loves. I'm adding some cranberries for some kind of extra carbohydrates and sweetness. Ooh, we definitely need some protein in here. Magic of television, look at that. All right, so yeah, throw some chicken breasts on top, whatever, you know, whatever you got on hand. That's looking good. Yum. And what else? Mm. Maybe some little basil leaves, let's see. And this is a dressing that I made. It's like a tahini, mm, tahini based um, green goddess dressing. So we'll just do a little drizzle drizzle. If the drizzle cooperates. Wow, wow. Oh, this is so good though. All right, that's as drizzly as she's gonna come. Uh, salad done, we need some avocado toast. So this is my strange favorite way to make avocado toast. You can just smash an avocado right onto your sourdough toast or whatever toast you like, but this is really how I like it, just for some extra flavor and some extra protein. So grab a handful of white beans. Whoop, lost one. Throw in your avocado. Boop. I like a little cream cheese. You can also like spread it first, but you can also just mix it right in because I like the flavor and the tang and the cheesiness. Obviously you can omit if you are keeping a vegan. We've got some fresh basil and some chives, some lemon juice. It's gonna keep everything nice and green. Get in there with some salt some peppy, good, just to get the party started. Oh, such a mess for just lunch. 
Let's blend. All right, so I got my favorite sourdough. Mm, so, so good. Just toasted that lightly. I'm gonna smear on this avocado mixture. So we bumped up the protein here, we bumped up the fiber. We've got our healthy fats, obviously, in our avocado and our nuts, lots of avocado, really. So yummy. Uh, I'm gonna do some tomatoes, cause why not get a little extra sweetness in there. Beaut. And I'm obsessed with balsamic drizzle, so that's usually how I like to top it. Mm -hmm. A little hemp heart action for some crunch and healthy fats and all the good stuff and you guys know i'm obsessed i might just throw on some extra herbs since we're getting fancy i mean only the best for the queen of daytime television beauty oh actually oh no salt fail but we don't waste nice done let's get in okay this is a serious upgrade if i may say so myself we have protein amazing in the chicken and a little bit in the white beans that I pureed into the uh, avocado toast. We have tons of healthy fats. Clearly that's kind of Kelly's jam. Avocado, avocado, nuts, and a dressing that's tahini based, which is also super delish. Uh, we got some carbs here with our sourdough, plus I added more with the cranberries and lots of beautiful micronutrients and greens. This looks delicious. I don't even know where to start, but let's get a piece of chicken in here because I feel like I need some more protein. My husband would hate me for putting all of this in my mouth, but you know what? We're going for it. Mm, that dressing slaps. Let's talk about snacks. Handfuls of nuts, lots of raw cashews, lots of raw almonds, lots of raw pistachios. I never eat more than a handful, but I have several handfuls a day. Yeah, I thought we went over this, but it's becoming kind of apparent that there are really only a handful of safe foods, literally, in Kelly's diet. And the fact that she has kind of like a rule around serving size is even more concerning. Just a quick note that rules like sticking to no more than a handful of nuts per day our classic 1990s diet culture. This is one of those oversimplified nutrition suggestions to help people estimate a serving size of nuts when we actually know that a serving size is not a recommendation of how much you should eat, but rather how much most people usually eat. So if you're needing to have a handful of nuts multiple times a day to feel satisfied, you probably just need to eat more calories and ideally more protein at your actual meals. And this is something that I'm fairly confident about in the context of this particular day. I've personally found that my digestion is a lot better when I have bigger meals and snacks as opposed to grazing throughout the day. So I'm going to bulk up Kelly's snack to make it more satiating and more satisfying and turn it into a hunger crushing combo. Let's do it. So I know that Kelly loves cashews. I also love cashews. But if I just have like a handful of nuts, I'm just not gonna feel satisfied. So I'm gonna add some nuts. We've got mango, which I feel like goes so nicely with cashews for a little carb action. And then I've just cooked some frozen edamame, also super yum. Great source of protein, Ooh, very hot, but delish. Mm. This is basically a locally made tahini seasoning. Mm. It's like spicy, limey, kind of sweet. It's delicious and it goes on all these things, so. Tell me that does not look delicious. Mango tahini. Oh, come on, bud. Mmm. Mmm. So delicious. Really takes it to the next level. All right, let's talk dinner, which I'm already not super jazzed about because it's a lot of the same thing. So apparently Kelly has the same salad that she had for lunch for dinner plus more grilled greens or some other kind of veg and some kind of like tofu or tahini for 
plant-based protein. Can we all now agree that folks who most often take these greens powder supplements are the people who really don't need them? I mean, it's always ironic to me when people load up on these greens powders, which claim to help to reduce bloating, but then like overload their meals and their plates with all these high FODMAP raw veg. We have to remember that variety is the spice of life. And while green veg are of course super nutritious, they may be missing key antioxidants that other colorful vegetables supply. Things like lycopene in tomatoes, anthocyanins in cabbage, and indoles in cauliflower, some of which are actually enhanced when you cook them, and others are best when they're raw. So enjoying a wide range of produce, some raw and some cooked, will help you meet your nutrient needs with the lowest risk of digestive distress. Honestly, I just can't do any more greens. <laughs> like, I feel like my FODMAP bucket has been filled to the brim, and I'm likely gonna be up all night farting. I also don't understand why there's no carbs in this meal. Honestly, this day of eating has been so impossibly low in calories and high in volume that it honestly feels like a bit of a chore just to think about eating this dinner. We can amp this up. All right, so I have pressed and marinated a little bit of tofu in olive oil, lemon zest, um, salt and pepper, and za'atar. Popping it into my air fryer here. Boop. How do we do this? Let's make some carbs. Okay, so last night I just parboiled some new potatoes, baby potatoes, and I'm gonna pan fry them because this is my kids' favorite way to eat potatoes. Need a little olive oil, a lot. Well, I'm crispy. Leave them alone. Lots of salt. All right, we got some crispy potatoes for our carbs. I'll save some for my kids. We've got some colorful veggies. so good crispy crispy all right this is like a tahini maple dressing that i made it's actually gonna do wonders on this as well and poppy she's like you've been cooking all day long give me something to eat anyways little za'atar uh i feel like this is a solid meal Way better than just more salad and vegetables. All right, let's recap here, folks. Okay, we got protein in the tofu, because I know that's Kelly's fave, plus I added the tahini, which I know she also loves. I'm counting that more as like a fat that has a little bit of protein, even though I know that Kelly said that it's kind of her go-to protein. Anyways, it's all in the mix. Also added some potatoes for carbs because let's be real, your girl needed that. And instead of the same, same salad and the kind of braised or grilled greens, which let's be real, we've done to death, I went for some nice colorful bell peppers. Protein, fats, fiber, looks great. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's good. Mm. All right, let's talk about dessert. And trigger warning, folks, because this is where it gets bad. In general, in general terms, I try not to cheat too much. What I will indulge in is like a delicious chocolate-covered almond or chocolate-covered cashew, some sort of like, so I still feel like there's something healthy in there. I think we can all agree that Harper's Bazaar did the right thing in taking this video down. A single chocolate almond is not dessert. And only allowing yourself something sweet because it has something healthy in it is a huge red flag to me. So in the name of challenging some of these problematic diet rituals, I'm not going to have anything healthy at all. I'm gonna have a bowl of ice cream. No protein, no healthy fats, no fiber, just delicious ice cream. And I'm not even gonna make it into a hunger crushing combo because sometimes it's totally okay if your meals are not balanced. Honestly, we had lots of veggies today, plus lots of protein and healthy fats. It's okay to have dessert just the way you like it because my health depends on having a balanced relationship with food. And cookies and cream, she just hits different. 
So what can we say about Kelly's day of eating? Well, it was rough. Considering I had to change basically like everything in the diet recall, I would say it left a lot to be desired. It was low in calories, low in carbs, low in protein, and most importantly, a very low in pleasure. Even if this were to be some kind of detox cleanse short term, as Kelly's team claimed, it would likely do nothing more than trigger some kind of rebound binge when you finally let yourself eat something other than avocados and nuts. I'm sorry, Kelly. I love you. I love you. I think you are beautiful. You're intelligent. You're hilarious. But this diet, is not it. Well guys, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like this type of video, please give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like to see me try and build on. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.